Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about containers in HTML. Now, a container in HTML is basically a set of tags that wraps other HTML elements. So I can define a starting and an ending tag, and then inside of those tags, I'll just put a bunch of other HTML elements. Now, generally, when you're writing HTML, it's good to wrap your HTML tags in what we would call like a wrapper tag. And that's basically just like a set of tags that sort of stores all of the HTML. And that's because when you start getting into more advanced HTML and you're looking at things like CSS, which is basically just a language that you can use to style your web pages. Usually if you wanna apply a certain styling to a bunch of different elements, you can just apply it to that wrapper element and all of the elements inside of it will inherit that style. I don't wanna to get too into like CSS and styling, but just know that a lot of times in HTML, it's good to wrap up a bunch of elements into a like overall container. And in this lesson, I wanna to talk to you guys about two of the most popular containers in HTML, which are divs and spans. And those are both sets of HTML tags that you can use as containers. You can put a bunch of different HTML elements inside of a div or a span, and then you'll, you're sort of like wrapping them up. Before I get into divs and spans, I wanna to talk to you guys about the different ways that HTML elements are displayed. And this is kind of an important concept for you guys to understand the difference between a div and a span. And this is also just an important concept in general when we're talking about HTML. So HTML has two basic ways that it displays elements. And keep in mind, there's more than two. You can get into a bunch of different other ones, but the two main ways, like the two ways that you need to know if you wanna know HTML are uh, block and inline. So CSS can display what are called block elements and it can display inline elements. Now block elements are CSS or HTML elements that take up the entire width of the page. So they're just like a block on the page. And inline elements are elements that only take up as much space as they need. So you could have inline elements like sitting right next to each other, but you couldn't have block elements sitting right next to each other because the block elements take up the entire width of the page. Now different HTML tags are gonna display differently. So some tags are block tags. Other tags are inline tags. A good example of this is paragraphs versus links. So if I was to create two links inside of HTML, I can just make a link and it doesn't really have to link to anything. It doesn't really matter. And I'll just say link one and I'll make another link down here. I'm just gonna copy this one and we'll call this link two. When I refresh my page, you'll see over here that these links are actually sitting right next to each other. So link one is sitting right next to link two. And this is a good example of two inline elements. So these links are able to sit next to each other because they're only taking up as much space on the page as they need, right? Link one only needs this amount of space, so it only takes up that much space. If I made the text in link one longer, now it's gonna have to take up more space, but you can see we can still stick link two here right next to it. These are, like I said, inline CSS elements. So they can sit in line with each other or they can sit on the same line is a good analogy. Uh, and now I'm gonna create two HTML paragraphs. So an HTML paragraph is in a good example of a block element. So I'm just gonna make one paragraph and then I'm gonna make another paragraph down here. And I'm actually gonna separate these. So what you'll notice is, unlike these links, how they sat next to each other, these two paragraphs aren't gonna be able to do that. So you can see we have paragraph one up here. And even though there's enough room up here in this file to put paragraph two, it's not gonna go there, right? So it doesn't matter how small I make paragraph one. Like it doesn't matter how much room there is over here for paragraph two to go. It's never gonna go over there because these are block elements. So block elements, like I said, they take up the entire width of the page and so they force the next element to go below them. These inline elements don't do that. So with these inline elements, you can just store them right next to each other in the file. And that's the difference between the two main display types in HTML, block display and inline display. As long as you understand that concept, the concept of a block element and the concept of an 
inline element, then you're gonna understand what spans and divs are used for. So the big difference between spans and divs is that spans are inline containers and divs are block containers. So I can create a span and you just do it by making these span tags and we can make an end one and I can just put some text inside of here. So let's just say span one and then I'll make another span down here, span two. And what you'll notice is when I refresh the page, these two spans, in other words, the elements or the text inside of these two spans is displayed right next to each other, right? So this span is an inline container. When I make two divs, I'm gonna make div and I'll do the same thing. So we'll just put some text in here. We can just say div one and div two. And now when I refresh the page, you'll notice that these divs are on different lines. So unlike those spans, which are inline elements, these divs are block elements. So the divs can't be on the same line because they're blocks. So div one is taking up the entire width of the screen, but these spans can because they're in line. So that's the big difference between divs and spans is that divs are in line or no, divs are block elements and spans are inline elements. And these are both containers. So we can use spans and divs as containers, right? So these are gonna hold either text or they're gonna hold like other HTML elements. When you start getting into CSS, which is how you style HTML, you can actually apply styling to these spans as well. So that's another reason why you might use a span. Divs are containers as well, but divs, are block elements. So anything you put inside a div is gonna be like a block element on the page. So that's the basic use for divs and spans. You're gonna see these used a lot. I think probably divs are used a little bit more than spans are, just because the circumstances for using spans are a little bit more specific than for divs. Generally, if you're defining a like overall container in HTML, you just wanna use a div. And a lot of times if you see people using containers in HTML, they're gonna wrap stuff in a div. So just remember that a div is a block element. So anything that goes inside of a div is gonna take up the whole width of the screen, right? That div container itself is gonna take up the width because it's a block element. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.